So it's October 8th, uh, 2019 on my farm today, and I'm just in the middle of harvesting. And I thought it'd be a good time to make a video as we transition into fall, what we're looking for to kind of keep the quality on my farm, but how different strains behave in the temperatures, especially our summer strains as it starts getting colder. So today I wanna to go over the varieties that we're growing and what we're moving into on my farm and go over different strain selection and what can happen with certain strains as as it gets colder on my farm here in Summerland. That's coming up next. First mushroom, let's talk about lion's mane. We're a, a seasonal mushroom farm, so we're growing outdoors. And lion's mane is one of those first mushrooms that is going to be a little bit more sensitive to humidity. And our lion's mane typically has a little bit more coloration than an indoor lion's mane. So you'll see little hues of pink and orange, <coughs> pink, orange, and yellow. And really the the art of picking lion's mane in our seasonal greenhouses is just catching that coloration before it gets uh, throughout the mushroom and it's ready to harvest so you'll see just a little bit on this one but this is still very dense and quite heavy and you really want to grow this more in uh, the the spring or the fall because lion's mane does dry out as it gets warmer and it is very sensitive to humidity so in our in our greenhouses the fans aren't running that often as it gets colder so if there's a spot that has more sun exposure we're gonna get a little bit more coloration just like that but you know it's not really that big of a deal that's just the product we have and if I really want you know I could clean this up and expose some of that white flesh underneath but you know, lion's mane is just that tricky mushroom. So, you know, it, it grows well this time of year in, in the fall, but in the spring, as it's warming up, the fans are running more and you know, it, it, it's not as sensitive and it's not gonna get this coloration uh, as more compared to like in the spring versus the fall. But then if we're growing this in the summer, this mushroom will lose quite a bit of weight. So we wanna grow this when the temperatures are kind of in the low 20s or or colder and it'll grow slower but we'll still be producing a better product so we got some just growing right here the lighting is not really good right now you guys can see so these are all our standard bags so this is uh, the soy hull and sawdust and we're using that for for everything on my farm for all of our varieties right now we got a few over here so lion's mane we're just starting to have show up in our greenhouses now as we get into early October and you know like this one is on the side of our greenhouse so maybe it doesn't get quite as much moisture because the fans aren't running as much so you get a little bit of coloration just because maybe the moisture uh, is not as much here so the humidity is a little bit lower and again it's very sensitive but this mushroom is still very dense it's just uh, the product that we're producing in our seasonal greenhouses I'll show you a, a big fail for our greenhouses right now pink oyster we uh, we were really behind on growing that this year and we already know this like this mushroom it it doesn't like it too hot but it, it it will actually die as it gets colder so these are actually all starting to harden so these pink oysters started but on my farm we're getting nights where it's really cold even down to like one celsius and this strain pretty much dies below six celsius so just know that pink oyster is very sensitive and you need to find if you're going to grow seasonal like us you need to find that window where you can kind of grow these between 10 and 25 celsius so we will often grow these kind of end of August into September, but being October 8th, 
we were way behind on these this year and, and these are these are all dead so pink oyster does not like to grow as it gets really cold which i'm sure most of you guys know but this this is what happens it's very sensitive to cold temperatures and it'll actually dry out whereas uh, some mushrooms they'll just grow slower with colder temperatures this mushroom will actually die i'm just going to bring you into my next greenhouse where we're harvesting elm oysters we grow these all summer long and being october this strain is just coming to an end and elm oysters they like it warm so what happens as it gets colder they become more brittle and they'll actually even they'll start drying out they're getting more sun spots this would be a good example just right here and it's just not the quality we're looking for so this would just be like a staff mushroom so elm oysters they really do well as, as, it, as it warms up and this is what we rely on all summer but as we transition we can still rely on this mushroom to produce but uh, the weights will actually be a lot less as it gets colder they become more brittle and in some cases they 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 get more sun scorching on them and they just they just don't look as nice this would be another example right here i'll just pick this one real quick so you can see just a little sun scorching but again like you know this mushroom is still very sellable i could pick some of these spots out and just kind of clean it up a little bit what i do want to show you guys though is elm oysters are really sensitive to the cold and excess moisture so as our greenhouses do get colder and there's less moisture we often see with elm oysters this mutation here and we're actually getting mushrooms growing on the cap of the mushroom and you can even feel this mushroom it's a lot more wet it's not soaking wet but when when this mushroom doesn't get as much airflow and the fans aren't running as much and it's very humid outside there's just excess moisture that the mushrooms are soaking up and this causes this mushroom specifically to get this uh this uh deformation and you know it, it is obviously it's edible it just doesn't look very good so that would be a good example it often forms on the pins as it's starting so you can kind of see right there and we'll probably have a few more yeah there's one just right there if you guys can see that i'll try to zoom in there you go so we can we can fix that by opening up the the greenhouse and reducing the the shade cloth so we'll actually normally in the summer we have shade cloth on the sidewalls here and that helps keep the the sun from scorching the mushrooms but as it cools down we actually roll the shade cloth the shade cloth down and this creates more airflow with these windows that we have in our greenhouses but it also causes more evaporation which then triggers the fans to run more often and then the fans they're actually bringing in fresh air as well as our passive windows and that that increase of fresh air will then kind of dry out the mushrooms a little bit get that stagnant air out and bring in enough fresh air to really stop that deformation from happening so we've just started doing that now and the, the key is is not having your greenhouse run too wet but you know this strain is getting stressed it's coming to the end of its life in in our greenhouses as we're getting colder so we'll be done growing elm oysters probably within the next week but still a beautiful mushroom that we rely on for about three months of the year we have our pearl oysters and this is a darker color oyster mushroom that we actually can grow all year long and this mushroom as it gets colder it just becomes darker but it does have quite a bit of weight as as it gets colder and this mushroom has a temperature range between 5 and 35 celsius outside but when we're using the shade cloth 
in our greenhouses we can reduce the temperature in here almost to as much as 10 degrees so we'll actually do a double shade cloth over the canopy of the greenhouse and then the shade cloth on the side walls that gets rolled up and we can manage at least 28 celsius in the peak summer out here and this and this mushroom specifically thrives in those warmer temperatures so we grow this year round and we rely on this mushroom to transition from cold to hot or hot to cold because we're growing seasonal mushrooms in our greenhouses beautiful oyster mushroom that happens to grow locally here in the okanagan and we cultured that and we've been playing around with with uh, figuring out the temperature range that this mushroom likes over the last three years and next year we'll be growing this mushroom heavily throughout our entire season really meaty oyster mushroom local indigenous mushroom to the okanagan here where my farm is in summerland it's really beautiful so we call this strain uh, 050 or pearl oyster but it's a pleurotus austriatus variety Finally, we talked about the double shade cloth. So this, this works really well in the summer. And this is actually a nice insulating layer of air. The top layer absorbs the heat from the sun. And then the shade cloth against the greenhouse really brings down the temperatures. So that shade cloth is gonna come off today. And this is actually the beginning of all our cold weather strains. And we have king oyster here. We grow that when it's between 5 and 28 Celsius outside and ideally this this mushroom is thriving you know around 24 Celsius so the shade cloth will help reduce the temperature in our greenhouse quite a bit and then we have the beginning of our tree oyster blocks which are here and they haven't started fruiting yet but we rely on this as it gets really cold and this strain is actually frost and freezing resistant and can handle the cold and can handle freezing up to about minus four Celsius for maybe four to five hours. So I almost forgot about chestnut mushrooms. We don't have many of these actually in the greenhouse anymore. We grow these, these in the summer. This strain particularly in our greenhouses we like to top fruit because the top of the bag will actually protect the mushroom but we've started side fruiting this strain just like we do our oysters in the greenhouse as it gets colder and it's starting to produce some really nice mushrooms the only thing i'd have to say is if the slit in the bag is smaller it's producing these gigantic chestnut mushrooms and you know the stem can be potentially a little bit woody so we want to maybe focus on doing some research on longer slits in the bags and we can grow these in the fall or the spring but definitely in the summer with our greenhouses you need to protect the mushrooms because they can be really sensitive to warmer temperatures as the humidity can drop uh, quite drastically and then these can dry out so we like to top fruit these in the bag like we do with our king oysters or enoki and that helps that helps remain humidity around the mushroom and prevent them from drying out. But other than that, beautiful mushroom. A lot of people grow these now. This is a new mushroom that came on the scene about three years ago. Chestnut mushroom seems to be the name that has stuck. This is a Foliota aptoposa, and we, we have this strain labeled in our culture bank as uh, 067. All right, well, that concludes this video today. I hope you guys really enjoy following my farm along and the challenges and the success that we have. And a big part of my farm is strain selection, and we've been working on this research for the last eight years. And this is a big part of what makes us really successful is figuring out awesome strains to grow throughout the seasons and throughout the months here in Summerland. So anyways, guys, we'll catch you in the next one.